I tell you, Mr. Holmes, this is a burglary gone wrong, just like the other two. Leave him alone, Lestrade. You know he never changes his mind when he's like this. But he is wasting his time. Our victim was killed by a common thief. Case closed. John. Could you take a look at the body for me? Tell me what you think. Do you mind, Lestrade? There does seem to be a cut on the neck. It looks to be about three millimetres wide. It looks like a gash made by a knife. That does seem to be the cause of death. We had worked that one out ourselves. Hold on. There's some slight foaming at the mouth. Although most of it's been removed, some of that residue still remains. It matches a victim of a poisoning. Very good, John. What else? Well, there is a small hole on the side of his neck. It looks like an incision made by a needle. Which means... I assume whatever it was that was injected into this man is what really killed him. And the knife is only here just to mislead us. Well done, John. What else is strange about this burglary? Doing so well as well, my friend. Not to worry. Shall I, Lestrade? Firstly, there is no sound of struggle. It seems strange that a man with a knife in his hands wouldn't have put up a fight when he was attacked. Speaking of the knife that was placed there after the throat was slit. Now, there was a small dot of blood on the knife block. There is no blood on the knife, so it doesn't belong to the attacker. It must belong to the victim who would have died on the spot. Therefore, our victim couldn't have picked up the knife, as he was already dead. Thirdly, it's just not a burglary. There's no sign of forced entrance and nothing has been taken. What about the £250,000 the victim took out of his bank account yesterday? We shall get to that in a moment, Mr. Charles. Now, gentlemen, dust. Across the entire apartment, there's an even layer of dust, so there are no parts or patches where it's lighter. Many no objects have been taken. Whatever was taken was handed over in person. I mean, this is not a burglary, but a meeting. A meeting? Yes, a meeting, Mr. Art. This man's watch stopped at 6.03. This must have been when the body hit the floor. In a magazine, I found this piece of paper. C-A-M-6? What does that mean? It means that the attacker knew the victim. And the attacker came to collect the £250,000. And this C-A-M person was here at 6pm when the watch stopped? Precisely. So who is C-A-M? Charles Augustus Milverton. Hmm. That's all this in the criminal underworld. Targets high profile people to extort them. Make the perfect target, Miss Blackwell. Why hasn't he been arrested already? If Milverton is arrested, his associates will release the material he has. Not just on me, but on his other victims as well. So what does a Home Office Minister have to do to get a man like Milverton on her back? Milverton has some imprudent messages and videos sent to a member of my staff. He plans on releasing them to the press if I don't pay him. Ah, that is quite the indiscretion. I won't apologise for what I've done, Mr Holmes. I did nothing illegal. But the Prime Minister won't want you on his cabinet, will he? Yes. Mr Holmes, I'm hiring you to retrieve these messages from Milverton. I don't care how you do it, but I want my revenge. There should be no need for petty revenge, Miss Blackwell. This should be dealt with properly. If you fail, I will be put in a precarious situation. Then we should endeavour not to fail then. When is his deadline? A week away. Hmm. Should have come to me earlier, Miss Blackwell. Fortunately for you, I'm already building a case on Milverton. 
so there is some hope. Now. Get it done, Mr. Holmes. Good day, Miss Blackwell. Sherlock. Hmm. Why don't we just present the note that was at Burke Street as evidence that Milverton's a murderer? Doesn't prove Milverton killed them. We need to find another way to incriminate him. All criminals could be arrested, John. We just need to find Milverton's smoking gun. I will be sometime, Watson. I need to wake up. Oh. Starting early? Uh, is that my jumper? Yes. Sherlock, why are you wearing my clothes? It's a disguise, John. <laughs> I can see that. It's just why my clothes specifically? I wanted to look plain, John. Not interesting. Able to blend in anyway. You're very good at that. You know you're not what I was expecting, David. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you'd be rude and arrogant, but you're not like that at all. You're the first guy who's actually interested in my job. My boss needs me. Hold on. Call me? Watson, do you think I could date anyone? <coughs> Sherlock, you couldn't get a first date, let alone a second. Then you'd be interested to hear that I have a girlfriend. Really? Well, I... I'm so sorry for misjudging you. Um, congratulations? Agatha. The housemaid. For God's sake, Sherlock! It was a necessary step, John. You can't... I needed information. This is too much, even for you. There was no other way, John. I know a Milton smoking gun is. He keeps his files on a hard drive in his home office. And Agatha? What about her? Why do you need to know where Milverton keeps his hard drive? I'm going to rob Milverton's house. Tell me you're not serious. Think about what you're doing. You'll get arrested. Surely you don't have to break the law to do this. If there was any other way to do this, John, I would take it. But there isn't. Milverton, if he's not stopped, will release his files tomorrow. And I cannot allow him to escape justice. He cannot go free, John. My self-respect is at stake here. I think this is a bad idea. But, if I have to break the law to help you, I will. You're not coming, John. Then you're not going. Sherlock, I made a promise to you that I would help you no matter the case, and I have never broken that promise. If. If you go alone, then I'll be forced to call the police. You can't help me. How do you know that? You don't. You can't tell me what's going to happen in there. You're not the only one with self-respect, Sherlock. So be it, John. We've spent the last couple of years in this flat together. It amused me if we spent the next couple in the cell. Now, it's 10.30 currently. If we leave at 11, we should be there by 12. And back here and home in time for tea. With Lubberton's hard drive in hand. However, I think it might pay to get 
changed into something less conspicuous. Burton should be asleep now, so she should be no trouble. What about cameras? There aren't any. Whoever's in kind of fall is dealing being on camera. They won't pick up your little face anytime soon. It's all part of the plan, John. You're cutting it late, but as long as you have what I ask. Now the money, my dear. You'd kill me after I pay you, like the others. Give me the money or get out, Miss Blackwell, or you will force my hand. Be rational here, Miss Blackwell. Kill me now and my maid will find you standing over my corpse. I'm sure the public will care much more if you're a murderer than if you had a little affair. I thought I could end this rationally, but after Holmes failed, my benefactor told me I won't get rid of you if I'm rational. You can't be arrested. Do you even care about what just happened?
I still can't get hold of Blackwell. I still don't understand why she'd do it. Desperation, I would assume. What we do know, John, she wasn't alone in this. There was someone else. Her benefactor. Do you understand what... Mr. Arf. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Watson. Are you busy? Never too busy to listen to you, Mr. Arf. It's been another burglary and murder. Only this time something a bit different. The victim. Charles Milverton. Rumoured to be involved in many blackmails around the city. We think that might be why somebody killed him. The housemaid saw a woman running from the building at about the time. But, incredibly, no video cameras. So we've got very little to go on. You have a prime suspect. Then you shouldn't need our help. I was rather hoping that you'd come down and have a look around with me. I'm afraid I can't help you, Lestrade. I knew of Milberton. True. And I considered him to be one of the most dangerous men in London. I always thought criminals could be caught. But in his case, I feel he has to be dealt with their private revenge. Mr. Holmes. Sherlock. My mind is made up, John. My sympathy is with the criminal. Whatever they may be, I'm sure there won't be any more trouble. Everything happened how you said it would. Good. Did you get it? Well done, Miss Blackwell. Now, tell me about Holmes.